We've all heard the recommendation or best practice when installing solar panel systems that you should face the panels due south or due north to get the most power. Due south for people in the northern hemisphere and due north for people down south. But is that really best? Or is there new analysis showing an east and west configuration could be better? Let's talk about this new analysis and then we'll discuss the ins and outs of why you should mount your solar panels in a certain orientation. Recently, I read an article with an attention-grabbing headline claiming new analysis showed that an east-west configuration could save homeowners money. The article discussed the opinions of two researchers in Australia named Kira Lee Rowe and Peter Pudney who work for the University of South Australia. Their main points were that there was an excess of power being produced in the middle of the day and that homeowners going solar could lower their need to buy grid power by 4-5% to 5 if they point the panels east and west. Supposedly, pointing east and west would help stabilize the power grid by providing more power during morning and afternoon. There were quotes from government leaders and solar industry bigwigs supporting the idea and urging more ideas like this to help solve energy challenges in southern Australia. But there are some concerns with this analysis. These researchers had to make a series of assumptions to get to their conclusion, and each of those assumptions can be debated. Now, I don't live in Australia, so maybe their assumptions are spot on for that region of the world. But let's take a look at each one individually and see if it is a good assumption. First, Ms. Rowe claimed that peak demand is in the morning, then there's a drop off in demand, and then another peak in the late afternoon. If this double hump demand curve were accurate, it definitely could give more validity to the idea of an east-west configuration. But I've never heard of a morning demand peak, so I did some digging to see if there was something that I may have missed. I was able to confirm that during the winter in southern Australia, electricity demand does follow the pattern described. However, during the summer in southern Australia, it is much different. In other parts of the world as well, the demand in the summer is very similar, but there's not a double hump in the winter. So this may be an isolated thing for Southern Australia due to the climate or unique household habits. So that presents some problems for the analysis and the article, at least in the rest of the world. But even in Southern Australia, their conclusion of saving money for an east-west configuration would only apply in the winter. During the summer, that homeowner would lose money. Whether there's an overall net savings or not is the question, but there wouldn't be much at all if there was. The next assumption that's made has to do with net metering and is inherent in their financial analysis. Unfortunately, they don't go into much detail on this analysis, but we can reverse engineer it a little bit. Their assertion is that a homeowner could save money because they would need to purchase less energy from the grid during the morning and late afternoon. But that requires yet another assumption to be true, and that is that the utility charges a variable or dynamic rate for each kilowatt hour consumed. In other words, the only way that this could save a homeowner money is if the homeowner is in a net metering relationship with a power provider that changes their rates hourly based on supply and demand. But not all utilities operate that way. Some utilities are in regulated markets where the price is set and changes require approval by a governing body. Other utilities offer both fixed rate and variable rate plans. So making the assumption that you shift your power production to more valuable pricing times of the day at least needs to have a huge asterisk next to it. Because in all cases where the net metering arrangement has a fixed price, a north or south facing array will win every time. The last assumption is that an east-west configuration is even possible for the average homeowner. The article didn't specify that the researchers used an even 50-50 split of east-facing and west-facing panels for their analysis, but they had to make some sort of assumption along those lines for their numbers. They couldn't have done any math if they didn't. But we don't need to know what kind of split they used because no matter what they used, they had to assume that the roof on all of those houses was conducive to mounting some panels east and some panels west. Some homes might get lucky and have that perfect option, but what if the peak of your roof runs northeast to southwest? Or what if you can only put 20% of your panels on the east? Or what if your roof only faces north and south? The vast majority of homeowners will not have the exact split that these researchers used in their assumptions. There's just too much variance in architecture and the orientation of houses. 
Now feel free to draw your own conclusions from this article and the research behind it, but my opinion is that this is an attempt to gain control and savings by electric utilities. In fact, it says exactly that right there in the article. I happen to have some first-hand experience dealing with utilities and working with their demand response teams, and there's a huge motivation for them to avoid adding more power generation. It's extremely expensive to build new power plants, especially when the peak power they need to provide is only needed on a few days per year where temperatures are the highest and all of those air conditioners are going full blast. The rest of the time, most of that power generation capacity is unused, and that translates to less money. So if utilities and governing bodies can control homeowners, either by legislation or by slightly misleading information, like we have here, they get the benefit. They already spend billions each year on gearing up for those peak summer days, so if they want to make some million dollar donations to some researchers and politicians to gain a sympathetic ear and control the narrative and avoid some of that new infrastructure, it's a win-win. Now you may think that's a conspiracy theory, but it's right there in the article, folks. Alright, so enough about the research and analysis. Let's talk about what is the best direction to mount your solar panels. Should you stick to the tried and true south-facing rule? or north facing for those people in the south? Or should you consider an east-west configuration? The answer is, it depends. And maybe that's the value of an article like this. It forces us to re-examine the way we're doing things and make sure it's the best. Let me be very clear here. In all cases, you will produce the most kilowatt hours over the course of a day by facing your panels either due south or due north. After that, things get tricky. So stay with me now. If you have an off-grid solar panel setup, or the ability to store your own power that you produce, then you're still good to go with south-facing or north-facing being the best. If you have a grid-tied solar panel system, and your utility pays you a flat fee for your power produced no matter what time of day, and you purchase your power at a fixed rate no matter what time of day, you're still good to go with south-facing or north-facing panels. But if you have a grid-tied solar panel system and your utility charges you and pays you a variable rate based on time of day and they're willing to pay you less for your power in the middle of the day, then you're maybe better off going with an east-west configuration. For me personally, I wouldn't make any long-term financial decisions based on today's energy prices and net metering relationships. There's a lot of change going on with net metering right now and utilities continue to pay less and less for co-generated power. Solar is a 25-year investment, so who knows what your electricity rates will be like in two years, let alone 20. At least with a north or south facing array, you know you're producing the most raw power. And with the fast rise of battery storage options, such as the Tesla Powerwall, you could store some of that excess power generated and use it yourself instead of selling excess power back to the utility. That gives you the money savings and the control, not the power company. Look. There's a lot of complexity to this kind of decision. So I want to touch on one last thing, and this is something I've said numerous times before. You have to know your specific power demand and needs, and that will re probably require making an investment in a power meter with data logging. The data collected will reveal critical information that can swing you one direction or the other. For example, your household may have a large power demand in the morning when you have an electric water heater trying to keep up with four teenagers taking showers. Or you might have a spike in the afternoon when everyone gets home from school and work and your smart thermostat kicks the air conditioner back on. Your monthly power bill from the utility probably isn't going to give you that much detail, so that's only half of the story. So it's important to know your energy consumption habits before you even think about going solar. In conclusion, a north or south facing solar panel system is still the best for producing the most energy, but there are a few scenarios where you might be better off facing the panels east and west. Just don't take the blanket recommendation of some article or even a solar installer's recommendation without digging deeper. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in solar, definitely subscribe to my channel for more solar content in the future.